to Good morning and welcome to the Animation Dingle alumni panel. My name is Shauna Cullen and I'm producer at Jam Media and I'm particularly excited to be hosting this panel because it's literally bursting at the screens with talent. This is kindly sponsored by Animation Ireland and the National Talent Academy. Animation Dingle turns 10 this year and this panel celebrates and explores all the ways it has grown and encourages and allows students and professionals to participate. People can participate through the big picture, to the Young Animator of the Year competition, to submitting stings, student films, and professional films, and of course, also attend as a student or professional and enjoy all that the industry has to offer. I will introduce each candidate on the panel, and they will talk to through their journey and their experience at Dingle over the years, looking at their current work and beyond, and if time, answer any questions at the end. Now, this is really special to me because five years ago, the big picture is where I started my career and met the guys here at JAM. Now, I pitched a very, very crappy project about old alcoholic men dying, which I won't bore you about, but I was participating in the same year as the well-deserved winner who happens to be on this panel. And that's Chris Craig, winner of the big picture 2007 with his pitch, Crater Lake. During his apprenticeship at JAM, this project was developed to become the title, The Slimefoots. Here's Chris. How do I unmute this? I don't want to ask them. <laughs> uh, how's it going? Uh, my name is uh, Chris Craig. Um, I have two first names. Yeah, you never heard that joke for the last like, like five years. Uh, yeah, I won the big picture in 2017 and uh, with the idea of Crater Lake. And that was kind of like a very kind of it was initially the end of the year project for um, for college. And then I was like, OK, so I can kind of it didn't get selected for the final year of film. So I was like, oh, I want to kind of try something with this anyway. So I was like, OK, I'll, I'll pitch it a dingle and see where it goes. And that was kind of about like a, a Bigfoot and an alien. And they were kind of like best friends goofing around the place. And uh, the initial kind of concept of a Bigfoot kind of came to me because like, I was kind of like obsessed with Bigfoots for a long time that I was kind of longer than I'd like to admit <laughs> just the idea of like this big mysterious hairy dude running around a, a forest kind of like myself like you know so uh, I me and my, my girlfriend we uh we decided to like fake a Bigfoot hoax here in Leash and uh we, we were just like ah screw we'll get a gorilla suit and dress up and and, uh, and see what happens kind of thing. So we went to took a lot of like terrible, terrible photos and and then sent it to the newspapers and stuff. And then lo and behold, like the newspapers start getting in touch with us being like, so where was the Bigfoot? What did he smell like? And it just got like way out of hand. So that was kind of like, that was ridiculous. Like was people like messaging us from all over the place, like asking about this random ass Bigfoot in like the middle of leash that did not exist or whatever. And we we're like, jeez. So that was like, all right, cool. Like, and then uh, we took that and then I was like, okay, we'll use the Bigfoot thing for uh, the, the pitch. And I was like, okay. So we took uh, Crater Lake and we kind of messed with it and mashed it. And Chris Dicker, who was head of development at Jam, who was an absolute godsend and knows his stuff, was like, here's how you pitch a show. <laughs> and uh, he kind of dragged me through the, the ins and outs of like how to actually make a proper like the process of doing it in the animation industry because it, it comes from college and you kind of have like ideas about oh how it works like you know and it's a long long laborious process to get it from off the ground and then lots of like rewrites and script notes and development and, and Chris was like bringing me through all of this like and and it was like okay here's how you design a character because even when like we were designing characters in college you'd, you'd draw like three thumbnails and be like okay that's that's the character and uh and then you'd settle on it but for the for the slime foots when we were doing the, the character designs for it i think there was there was definitely over over 200 for huey i was just like drawing big foots and i'd go to chris hey what's your take of this he was like nah no nah, do it again do it again i was like okay <laughs> but uh in the end though like what like what he was trying to teach me was it was all about the, the silhouette of a character like you know and then in the end we got like the five silhouettes of the the mixed family of bigfoots and aliens together like bang on and you can, to be recognizable in the dark and that's kind of something that stuck with me like like for years after like of when i'm drawing a character it's like 
make sure the silhouette is bang on. <laughs> and it's like, I just heard Chris Dickers. I was like, oh, I need to go to silhouette. Like, you know? So that was, uh, we were doing the script of that. And the, the idea was with the show, we were going to develop it over the, the six months and then pitch it a cartoon form. And um, so we, we spent the whole summer putting together like a trailer for it. And then, and then kind of like writing a script. We had a script to go with it initially. And then there was like story beats. So really nice, like, filled out panels of like kind of like a really fancy version of a storyboard to kind of drag it through the episode and be like this is what's happening here but like really really detailed nice like say nearly still frames out of the out of the show so we're doing that that was really good fun like and and then just to see that happen and it kind of come to life and then all the like amazing artists around me like being like so much better you're like how the hell am we gonna get there like and that that was the six months of jam so then we went to form and we pitched it in front of a lot of these scary industry people and there's a big spooky clock in front of you and it's you have like 20 minutes and it's the most intimidating thing in my life was just like seeing the clock count down and you're trying to fit it all in and we were pitching and that went really well and then it kind of it like animation development is like a it's a pure roller coaster um we went to we ended up going to cartoon network with it we went to Disney, we went to Netflix with it, and it's like, you're like, ah, it's going to happen. Ah, it's, ah, it's going to happen. And it's like consistently been that for the last like five years. Like, so it's not like just something you go, I'm going to make a cartoon show. And then next morning you wake up and here's your show, all 52 episodes on a plate in front of you. It's a long, long process. And we're, we're still going, still there. It's, uh, we're, we're getting there eventually. So in the middle of doing that, I was like, we, we kind of, I was working on projects in Jan. Uh, we were doing Becky's Bunch, I was doing kind of roll and like composite and stuff like that. And I was like, I, I that wasn't my job like initially, but I was like, okay, give me, I'll try that one out. And then we, we ended up doing that. And then we were doing Jesse and Nessie, which was like, I was doing backgrounds on that. So I've been kind of like all through my, my animation career since Dingle, I've been just kind of like, I'll do this, I'll do this. I've been just plopped into everything. Like, because my last job, I was in Cavalier animation, doing animating on boy, girl. And that's my first actual, like, proper, proper TV production animation. And so I, I got kind of, like, all over the place, like, doing random stuff. So that's what I've been doing in the last five years since Big Picture. It's been a big old roller coaster of the animation industry. Really fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's all started literally because of, like, do you know what? My, my, old, my, my film from me... Like final year film, it was like ah, it's it's not dead yet, and it's been we're we're still like that initial kind of nugget from the final year film is still being kind of processed along. So if you have something and someone goes ah, that's shit, just keep dragging it, like because like surely to God, like <laughs> just keep going, because please God, <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Hey, <laughs> Are you ready for Scott? to play yeah if scott wants to play this so you can actually this would be the result of what we spent in jam doing um i done the character design we had rafa who's a superstar animator he was animating on this uh borja who's an amazing background artist he's done like all the background work on this and just me being like this is only five years ago but i literally felt like a 10 year old kid when this was all kind of coming together around me like as it's like oh look he's finally alive <laughs> yeah so this is uh this is what we got. It's uh it's a it's a show about a blended family of Bigfoots and aliens, and uh you'll see for yourself what's going on. It's it's weird, it's good. <laughs> Check it. Our family's blended. It's extended, it's supernaturally splendid. Please don't be offended. Perfect summer eve, I was walking in the woods. I was minding my own business like a big foot should. When I stepped into a beam of the strangest white light, it was coming from a craft overhead. What a sight. Now, bigots aren't known for making assumptions, but this felt like attempted alien abduction. I guess they didn't realize this true Bigfoot size. Crashing down to Earth King, Gabby and Al. Say hello to Huey, your new Bigfoot pal. I took them both home to meet my mama. Her name is Frangella, at the time she had no fella. And who could have predicted that the sparks would fly when mama caught Alice and Lily and I? It was a strange surprise. It changed up all of our lives. So a family of slime joined a family of big feet. Together we're trying and we're so glad that we did meet. Yeah, so check your Sasquatch. It's time for the slime foot.
thanks a million for that, Chris. Uh, that was very humorous and very interesting. Um, next, we have Jack McHugh and Connor McNally, winners of the best 2D film in 2021 with their film, Ruslan. They are back this year with their new film, Little Boy Litter, which is nominated for the best Irish short award. Go ahead, Jack and Connor. How's it going? I'm Jack McHugh, I'm from Kilkenny. I'm Connor McNally, I'm from Offaly. And as Sean was saying there, we were we had our film in Dingle last year as students at uh, Roostland. Now we're back again with Little by Litter. So we have a little clip that kind of shows some of the films that we've made as a duo. So if Scott can roll that there, and we'll talk a bit about <laughs> All right, so last year, yeah, so last year, was, first of all, we met in college in IADT Dunleary, and we were good friends from the start. Like, so then when it came to making a few films, uh, like projects and stuff together, we just said, right, we'll get it out of the way. We'll see if we can work well together. Because not because as you know, it's not always the case where friends can work well as a duo. Might be arguments and stuff. So we made a project. Uh, called Warfare. It was a bit of it there in that clip. And then we were happy with how it went. So then for the final year, we said, we'll, we'll stick together for our graduation film. And then that was Ruslan. And uh, yes, yeah, so we sent around in a few festivals and all. And it's kind of strange because we had gone to Dingle every year while we were studying and loved the crack of like going out and looking at all these mad different styles of films and everything. But then for our, our one year, the first year that we had a film in Dingle, then it was online. So it was kind of a, an anti-climax after all the years. But then, of course, winning the award was a big um, a big consolation for that. We were absolutely delighted with it. Um, and then we used Ruslan then to apply for the offline animation residency in Burr in Offaly. And then that's where we made our new film, Little by Litter. So I'll let Connor talk about that. So oh, yeah, that's... That's also on the environmental section this year in Dingle. Um, we didn't really know how to pitch, like how to pitch to get a project, but uh, we kind of just, we're just like, we we loved making Roosland so much. So we have to make something now before we like get into the industry properly after college. So we just, he just drove down to my house one day and we came up with this this pitch before the deadline and luckily we got that so that was a six month residency in Burr uh, in Offaly um, where we were just pretty much isolated from society like especially during a uh, during COVID and it's in this small rural town in Ireland like um, we were locked in Basically locked in, yeah, like nothing was open or anything, but it's a great space to work on your own own project. Like you've got no distractions, really. Um, again, it was great that there was two of us as well, kind of to keep each other entertained and molded actually makes them. Um, so that finished up around this time last year. And then, yeah, we, we had to then like keep making it in our own houses. Um, yeah, what else? We were with Kleena and Noonan as well, just to give Kleena a shout out in Burr. So we weren't completely yeah. on our own. We had a bit of crack with Kleena as well, while she was working on her own film. 
Yeah, and just to give them a plug as well, that next the deadline for the next uh, offline residency is next week. They still have time. Yeah. It took us, what, like maybe four hours to come up with our pitch. Yeah. So if we could do it, it's still time for anyone else to do it if you want to go and make a film. It doesn't even have to be a film. Uh, can be anything you want. If you just want to make something like maybe your grad film didn't go to plan or something. Um, you weren't happy with it, whatever. Just this is a question, I feel like. Um, if you want to keep making something, yeah, <laughs> I'd say apply. It's not, I don't think a lot of people really know about it either. Yeah. So. Hopefully they'll, they'll pay us something as well for plugging it so much here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Jackie and Connor. Um, that was really, really interesting. And for the plug as well, I'm sure they'll be uh, <laughs> delighted with that. Um, it's great to see you come back as as professionals um, to the festival again. Um, and there, you guys are a great example, the same as Chris. Um, now let me introduce you to Owen O'Kane, winner of the best of oh, sorry, winner of the inaugural Best Sting Award in 2020 with In Pursuit of Bigfoot. And this year, Owen is presenting his latest film, Socks and Squimpy Show, nominated for the Best Irish Student Short Award. Go ahead, Owen. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm a 2D animator from Donegal, recently graduated from LIT. Um, these days, I'm doing a bit of uh, like freelance work, cleanup, stuff like that. Um, making uh, shorts for film festivals. Um, first entered Dingle in 2020 with the, the short uh, and fished in pursuit of Bigfoot. Uh, for the sting competition, um, the theme of it was in pursuit. So I kind of had the idea of uh, the fished kind of searching for Bigfoot. So it's kind of like shots him going through the forest and stuff and just like kind of looking for Bigfoot. And the, the prize at the end for him was a, a ticket to, to Dingle. So he finds him and uh, they go off to Dingle and have the crack. Uh, it, was just, it was pretty cool that it won. It was a, it's a nice, it's pretty cool experience like um i watched the festival last year as well didn't have anything in it but it was still pretty cool um there's lots of cool uh conferences and stuff um and this year i'm back with uh my new short socks and squimmy show which is uh I made it in college um it was like my grad film and it's about these two peanut farmers who live on a peanut farm. And the peanut farm is kind of in the center of the of the universe. So there's kind of like everything's drawn towards it. So they've got like uh, like ghosts and stuff. And there's like lizard people underneath the, the crust of the earth. And there's like uh, ancient beings that crashed and they sort of like live underneath the, the peanut farm. So it's just like all kinds of weird stuff happening and it's they got aliens as well which is what the short i've done is about like uh socks and swimmy they go out to the forest they see a, a ufo crash and they go out to the forest and uh there's a wee alien in it and uh they think it'd be fun to take him back so they take him back to the house and he just he just starts wrecking the place and like drinking cans and just like smashing the place up so they try to get rid of him, but it seems impossible. They just can't get rid of him. And then eventually they do get rid of him. And uh, it's just like, that's it, basically. Um, it's pretty, I took like a lot of inspiration from Midnight Gospel and Adventure Time. So like those shows, so it's taking a lot of inspiration from that. I think uh, Scott is a clip of it there.
Thanks, Emil, for that, Owen. Um, that was really interesting. It's great to see that there's themes from Bigfoots to Peanuts and everything. So, um, But next, now we have up is Josh O'Keefe, winner of the Big Picture in 2018 with his pitch, Monster Homes, and presenting the fall of the Ibis King here at the festival this year. This film is nominated also for the Best Irish Short Award. Hi. So um, I'm uh, Josh O'Keefe, an animation filmmaker from Wicklow. Um, so I graduated from IDT in Dunleary in 2020. Uh, I was in the same year, in the same class as Jack and Connor there. And um, so yeah, my graduation film, which I co-directed with uh, Mika Dranma, is playing at Dingle this year. And um, well, yeah, I guess I'll start with the big picture since that's earlier. Uh, so yeah, originally I pitched in same year as both Shauna and Chris there. And uh, Chris Chris obviously won uh, that year. And then I decided to try to pitch again the following year, um, 2018. But I didn't, I didn't get in as one of the finalists, but then I got very lucky in that someone obviously like dropped out last minute and I like managed to squirm in and get the internship that way. Um, and so then, yeah, for the six month internship, I got to develop this idea. I pitched uh, Monster Homes with uh, Chris Dicker and Alva. And I got to work with uh, like Adam and Lisa that were helping do art for it and everything. And it was just like, yeah, really great experience. So uh, I recommend anyone, anyone interested in like making a show to, to apply for the big picture. And I remember it was like real weird like I kept feeling like I needed to like draw and Chris Dicker would just like keep telling me like you just need to like think like just sit there and think so, like stop drawing and like you can go like go to a coffee shop or go to like Steven's Green but it, it doesn't feel right because you're like being paid to just like sit there and think so yeah it was kind of it was a nice learning experience though uh, and then at the end of that we got to pitch the show in uh, over in France at Cartoon Springboard um and yeah then when I, so when I went hello you're back okay <laughs> sorry i think i received a call there um can we play the pitch from that project, please? Uh, okay, so those are actually clips from, uh, so I'll talk about that now. It's the, after I finished up in Jam, I went back to college and uh, co-directed my graduation film with uh, Mikai Geronimo. And um, then after we graduated, so we didn't quite finish it in time. And I wish I could blame it on COVID, but it was just like really long. And we were like coloring the characters like frame by frame. Uh, so we've, both myself and Mikai worked as animators on the Anmaps and Plans film Bardo, directed by Ashley Conroy, which is also playing at Dingle this year. Um, and meanwhile, we we're like finishing our graduation film. And then at the end of the working on Bardo, we had the chance to uh, write and co-direct a short Halloween animation for 
uh, or G, which is the second clip that played there. And uh, then there's, I think there's one last clip, which is the project I developed after the big picture. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, what we, actually it was like Chris Craig's pitch uh, over in France where we played like story beats while explaining the story. The show is basically about uh, this island where it's like at the very top of the island there's a massive boulder and someone pushes the boulder and like wrecks the whole island and then the the whole show is like a kind of mystery uh, detective show where the, the two main characters are trying to work out who pushed the boulder and yeah thank you thanks a million josh that's really interesting. You've uh, experienced all uh, facets of the of the festival over the past few years and best of luck at the awards. And um, now let me introduce you to Cora McKenna. Cora is an animation director and animator for 2D hand-drawn films and series. And since graduating from the animation workshop in Denmark with her graduation film, Sugar, she has worked for studios such as Cartoon Saloon, Golden Wolf and Maps and Plans. And she is currently a director working from home in Kilkenny. So go ahead, Cora. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah, so my name is Cora. Um, I was at Dingle two years ago, one year. I don't, I don't even remember because um, of COVID. Um, but yeah, we won the international uh, short film here, which was really, really awesome. Uh, like Jack said, it was like online, so a little bit like it was really disappointing to not be able to go there and like see people but um again it was really nice to win and glad to be back and still involved with um the festival but yeah um about me um yeah so I graduated in 2020 from the animation workshop in Denmark um then came back to Ireland uh worked for freelance basically a month after I graduated COVID happened so you can imagine what happened there. Uh, I think everyone on the panel had the same experience of probably working from home for like two years. Um, and yeah, I worked on Bardo as well with Nmaps and Plans and Josh and Mikai um, as lead animator. Um, that was really, really nice. Um, like I wanted to go more into like directing or like leadership and that was a really nice like step uh, on the way. Um, and then, yeah, about a year ago, I started at uh, Studio Mala. I'm currently like a director there uh, on all kinds of things. Uh, it's been really cool. Like I get uh, to dip my like hands in every kind of aspect of, of films and stuff. And that's why I, what I enjoy most. Um, I'm mostly like assistant directors on projects, which is, I guess, um, like an interesting in between of like directing a project, but it not being your own IP and kind of directing for like clients and stuff like that um but yeah in the future i hope to like direct my my own ideas with mala and stuff uh, and our own like ips from there um yeah that's pretty much uh what i've been doing um and yeah sugar was my film um so yeah maybe like we just play the clip now it's just the Yeah, so it's extremely short, but it's just it's just it's just a trailer. Um, yeah, so we made that in Denmark. Um, I was like the only Irish person working on it uh, out of all my classmates. Like no one had even been to Ireland, so um, it was a, a fun one to make. Um, but yeah, in the school we we pretty much have like well we try to make like a more professional environment when we're making the film. So like we all have roles. Like I was the singular director of the film um but obviously like you know everyone had input on, on like most almost every stage um but yeah that was a, a really cool experience and and it gave us like a really good stepping stone to like go into actually working um and I found that you know Sharga gave me like so much opportunities um like uh, even you know like uh, Alan from and Maps and Plans he saw Shergar and he thought yeah that like you know the style is really cool and that's how I got to work on Bardo got to work with them um you know it, it, it 
if someone from Crunchyroll saw it in some festival in Canada or something and I had a call with like Crunchyroll and like we've been nominated for a bunch of stuff and uh, you know uh, we were in the, an article on Cartoon Brew or something at some point and that was like really really cool like I didn't expect it to like go that far at all um uh, and yeah like it's funny because it's just based on my experience in Ballyferma um and I love horses so um kind of crazy um and yeah it's it's nice to be part of Dingle again um even though it's online and hopefully like in the next coming years we might get to share points again um but yeah I've always enjoyed Dingle can't wait to see you guys there in the future uh that's it for me Brilliant. Thanks so much, Cora. And guys, if you haven't seen Sugar, I highly recommend it. It's a brilliant short and it's actually brilliant to see female directors coming through as well. So well done on that. Um, now, we should have had Kirsten Hennessy, who was our first virtual big picture winner with her project Luna. Um, but however, crappy Irish weather has led to crappy Irish Wi-Fi. So that has forced her to cancel. But now let me introduce you to Debbie Tan, winner of the Big Picture 2019 with her pitch, Hannah's Ark. During her apprenticeship with Jam Media, this project was developed with the title Hannah Nana. So take it away, Debbie. So hello, friends. Um, I'm Deborah Tan, affectionately known by my peers as Debbie. Uh, I'm a 2D animator, production designer, and freelance illustrator. I have worked, um, so before coming to Ireland, I was working in the animation industry back home in Malaysia. And I decided to come to Ireland to pursue my uh, degree in animation. And uh, yeah, I managed to work with a number of amazing folks, folks sorry, <laughs> amazing folks back in my hometown in Malaysia and also here in Ireland, such as Flickapix and Jam, obviously, shout out to you all, and, and an e-learning company. I am currently in between jobs at the moment and I'm looking for my next gig. So if you know anyone who is currently looking for people, I am your girl. So <laughs> my first taste of animation dingo was way back in 2018 when I volunteered under IT Trilly, now known as Monster Technology University. Um, I had no inkling of what animation dingo was. There were no such thing as animation festivals back home. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll just, you know, waltz right in and volunteer and see what the crack was about, you know? And uh, I really loved it. Everyone's so nice and warm and friendly and welcoming. And I knew I just wanted to be part of the festival again somehow. And um, I mean, the environment was so chill. I, I never knew Irish people were so welcoming. And, you know, it's such a nice environment to be in where you can just sit back in the bar and relax and chat with people and just, you know, people of your peers and stuff. And that was just mind blowing to me. I was like, wow, you can do this. So, yeah. And um, so when 2019 rolled around and the calls for the big picture were put out, my lecturers at IT Charlie were really encouraging us to apply for the event. Um, shout out to Rosie, Marty, and Lisa. And I was just like, uh -huh, okay, I have so many assignments, yada, yada, yada. Uh, another thing to add to my list. So I was just like, okay, I'll just brush it off. And like Jack and Connor, of course, last minute coming up with it like a day before, I was like, I was actually at my friend's house and I was watching her niece, her two-year-old niece, like hemming and hawing about the house. And I was like, what would I want her to watch on TV that I would have loved to watch as a kid? And um, so I wrote a pitch. Uh, amazingly, was selected as a finalist. And after a few weeks of like reiterating my ideas with the development team, uh, with Chris and Elva, um, I went up on stage at Animation Dingle with five other contestants in 2019, pitched my idea, Hannah's Ark, in front of 400 people, which is a really big feat. <laughs> and um, I won. And thus, Hannah and Nana was born. Um, we brought this idea to Cartoon Springboard. So my Cartoon Springboard was actually in Valencia, Spain, and it was an incredible experience. Um, yeah, the lead up to it was just sitting down like what Josh said, like Chris, Chris was also like always telling me because I was also in the same mindset, like, oh, you're in this internship. So just keep drawing that. He's like, nah, -uh, sit down and think. And I'm just like, oh, my sweet baby Jesus. What am I supposed to think about? <laughs> you know? And um, yeah, but it was great crack. Um, it was amazing to work 
and I with the team, like I had Borha, who was amazing, who gave us amazing watercolor effects on the background, which you will see soon. Rafa, uh, who did amazing animation. I had Adam and Lisa work on the development as well. And um, yeah, so we brought it up to Cartoon Springboard where you get all like peers of your age, like students to come and pitch their idea to professionals to see how viable the idea is in the industry. And that was a great experience for me because I, I never experienced like pitching to such a big crowd of professionals before. So it was a very like insightful kind of experience for me. And um, yeah, so we did that for six months and um, Scott, I'll let you show the clip to see what it is today. And let's present you Hannah Nana. Brilliant. Thank you, Debbie. That was really interesting. And I loved working with you on that project. Um, I think this panel shows you to create what you love with the pals you love, whether that is Bigfoot conspiracies, peanuts, socks, horses or animals and all in between. But maybe not alcoholic old men like me or you'll end up a producer. <laughs> I'm just joking. So I hope you enjoyed all the ways you can get involved in the festival. There is no linear trajectory in, in these careers and feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, on this panel for advice. They're all very lovely people and they'd be happy to chat to you. And just be sure to be at Dingle next year and come up to any of us and let's share a pint in 2023. So thanks a million, everybody. <laughs>